one step closer towards the chase for the Duracell Cup Series Championship as today we welcome you to our 23rd race of the season as we get ready to turn left and right at the road course in upstate New York known as Watkins Glen International. Getting ready for the running of the Go Bowling at the Glen here today. 27 laps of racing and I was actually looking back through the... Uh, through the statistics of this season, we've run two other road courses so far this year. First race was at Sonoma. That was back in the first half of the regular season. And then uh, just starting off the second half of the regular season at the Pensacola Road Course. Surprisingly enough, both those races have been won by Northeast Motorsports Chevrolet drivers. William Brock won at Sonoma and Ryan Butcher ended up winning at uh, Pensacola. And kind of interesting that we've got a couple of those Northeast Motorsports cars starting up here towards the frontier today. Not saying that they're going to win, but definitely saying that they've got their road course program pretty pat down. And they could be uh, one of the favorite teams coming into this race. As Michael Norman lines up on the pole, though, for this one, Michael Norman coming into this race, the second highest driver in the point standings without a victory. So there is no doubt about it this late in the season. If he were to go to victory lane and go coast to coast, he would be locked into the playoffs. Alongside of him, though, a driver who bested him back at New Hampshire. Norman finished second to Austin LaPlante. LaPlante, when he got his first win, that pretty much ensured him a spot in chase for the championship as he comes into this race 11th, currently in the overall standing. So right now, he is in good shape. As are a couple of drivers lined up behind him. William Brock lining up third. Obviously, two wins. Third in the point standings. He's obviously locked in. Benny Watson with a win at Darlington. Ninth in points. He's locked in at this point. And Carter Friesen, who rolls off on the outside of row three. He comes into this race, our Daytona 500 winner, seventh in the points, so he's locked in at this point in time. Let's go get that command. Is this on? Uh, drivers, start your engines. And as the command is given, uh, we will show you here your playoff grid coming into today's race at Watkins Glen. And you will notice that we can, at this point, speculate some drivers that are locked in, knowing that this is uh, the fourth to last race of the regular season. So at this current point in time, I would say the drivers that are currently locked into the playoffs would be, obviously, your two-time winners, Zach Rogers, William Brock, Jordan Lopez, and Jose Mills, provided Mills stays in the top 30 in points. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and then the drivers with one win that I think right now would be locked into the playoffs would include Carter Friesen, Jesse Turner, Benny Watson, Austin LaPlante, Chris Dollerton, James Qualls, who won last week's race at Martinsville to qualify into the playoffs, Kyle Matthews, and Mitchell Collins. Right now, I think they're all locked in. Jessica Shelton and Dylan Pote with good performances today could lock themselves up spots in the playoffs heading into next week. The question mark drivers right now, Ryan Butcher, he's 24th in the point standings. James Shelley, he's 28th in points. And two-time winner Jose Mills getting back down near that 30th in the standings cut line. He's 25th in the points coming into this race. Uh, if my calculations are correct, Ryan Butcher comes into this race... 17 points ahead of the cut line. Jose Mills, 13 points ahead of the cut line. And James Shelley, who managed to work its way up two spots in the standings after a good performance last week at Martinsville, 28th in the points, but he is still only six points ahead of the cut line. He is rolling off from good starting position here today in ninth, but we'll see if he can back it up with a good finish. And, of course, for James Shelley, if any driver above him in the point stands goes to victory lane here today, they would more than likely be in, and he would be out. Uh, we saw last week with James Qualls getting his first win of the season. He knocked out Levi McIntyre from the 16th slot. McIntyre was in there, uh, heading into Martinsville, highest in the point standings without a victory. Got some New York natives here in the field. We'll see if the hometown drivers can do anything. Seth Cole, Johnny Garner, Benjamin Miles. And another thing, too, we are not running the 2019's rules package, but I should point out the fact we are running the CTS physics. So we will see drivers be able to get runs on the straightaway, and it should make for some good racing through the field rather than them getting single file and staying single file for a majority of this race. But it will be the Chevy Camaros on the front row. Michael Norman, Austin LaPlante. They rekindle their battle from New Hampshire. They'll lead us down to the green. Let's roll at the Glen.
Back up through the gears after the very slow right-handed turn one. Now through the S's, probably one of the faster portions of the racetrack. And where a lot of drivers you'll see be making passes for position. Battle will be on for second between teammates William Brock and Austin LaPlante. Seth Cole right there waiting to see which lane op opens up. And here comes one of the most technical portions of the track here. The bus stop, the chicane, the dog leg, a lot of different names for it. But if you mess it up, then it's going to be the end of your race. There's no doubt about it. Norman's going to step away with the lead. Brock's going to slot into second. William Brock winning the first road course race of the season back at Sonoma on fuel strategy. Trying to get yet another victory. As a matter of fact, his, his uh, statistics at road courses have been really, really good. He won at Sonoma. He finished second at Pensacola. And now he's running second here at the Glen. Trying to battle for the third position as LaPlante's going to hold on to the spot at least for now. Battle will back, be back here for fifth. Jose Mills to the inside of Benny Watson. Looks like Mills is going to clear and take that position. Mentioned Jose Mills coming into this race. 25th in the point standing. So he needs to get himself away from 30th in the uh, standings cut line again. To have his two wins count towards a playoff spot. Had good starting track position here today. And right now, drafting with Seth Cole. A little bit of a draft down that straightaway before they get here into the bus stop. Seth Cole trying to take third place away from Austin LaPlante. And as this is going on just ahead, William Brock is reeling Michael Norman in for the race lead. Utilizing the draft on these straightaway sections, and he is closing up to the back bumper of the Budweiser All Pro Series Camaro. As LaPlante steps out of line for third on Seth Cole. Seth Cole's finishes have been pretty good the last couple of weeks. He finished pretty well back at uh, Martinsville. He was en route to a really good finish, but after the, I think it was the second caution, uh, he faded back. I think he finished around the 15th position. Kyle Matthews comes into this race 14th in the point standings. Our Bristol race winner right behind him, our Daytona 500, Victor Carter Friesen. Both of them riding in the top 10, making a clear case for both of them to make it into the playoffs. And James Shelley's been able to slot himself into the 10th spot, trying to keep himself in contention for a playoff position. Right now, though, he is probably the biggest fan of William Brock. He needs Brock to get up there and take the lead away from Michael Norman, either Brock or LaPlante, because James Shelley, in order to keep his playoff hopes alive, he needs a repeat winner. He does not need to have a different driver go to victory lane. The only shot I could see him of keeping his playoff hopes alive is if he were able to finish well ahead of Ryan Butcher here today and put Ryan Butcher down into the cutoff position. And in order to do that, he would need to finish. I'm trying to do the calculations in my head. It looks like he would have to finish 11. Yeah, 11 positions, no, 12 positions ahead of Ryan Butcher here today. As we've had an exchange for the lead, William Brock ran down Michael Norman, and he will take the top spot. We don't really have that much of a battle coming into this race as far as the overall points lead. We've seen Levi McIntyre, Zach Rogers, and William Brock be in a pretty, uh, pretty, uh, Good dogfight for the overall points lead last couple of weeks. Now there's only two drivers really competing for the overall points lead coming into this race. Zach Rogers and Levi McIntyre. They're separated by six points. William Brock's 20 points back. But he certainly could make up some ground here today if he were to pick up his third win on the season. Let's drop back a little bit here. Find some of our other former winners trying to confirm themselves spots in the playoffs. I see... Mitchell Collins back here and Zach Rogers. This is a battle for the 17th position. Collins our winner at Kansas. Zach Rogers, who won at Pikes Peak earlier on this season and then just a couple of weeks ago got his second win of the year at Texas. Chris Dollarton, our Fuel Motorsports Park winner back in 20th. And there is Wyatt Quayle. Wyatt Quayle DNF'd last week at Martinsville. 
I'm sorry, was it Martinsville? No, it was at Texas, I'm sorry. And he did not finish well at Martinsville, though. He finished way back in the pack. He comes into this race currently situated 32nd in points, 27 points behind the cut line. So our Dover winner definitely needs a good run here today, and right now he's only halfway up through the field in the 21st position. His teammate and last week's winner, James Qualls, coming off that victory at Martinsville. He's currently in the 24th position. There's a couple of the hometown boys there. Benjamin Miles out of the Rochester area. Johnny Gardner down around the Oneana area. They are in 25th and 26th right now. Mentioned a couple of drivers with question marks about where they would be as far as locked into the playoffs. Jessica Shelton right now is 27th on the chart. And Dylan Poti currently in 30th. And those were two drivers that needed good runs here today to lock themselves up spots in the playoffs with three races remaining when this uh, race comes to a close. Last road course we were at, Ryan Butcher went to victory lane, Pensacola. Right now he's back in 32nd. And right now that is good news for James Shelley because James Shelley trying to have a 12-position uh, gap between himself and the 24. So that way Butcher would fall down into the 16th slot as far as our live points are concerned. And if we did have a different winner here today, it would be Butcher out and Shelley would still be in the playoff grid. Drop back here a little bit further and you see dead last right now is Jesse Turner in the 47. Turner coming into this race eighth in the points, our winner from Atlanta. Not the run he was looking for as up at the front, William Brock leads, Seth Cole starting to reel him in. Got a battle for third, Jose Mills. He's gonna put his Ford Mustang to the outside of Michael Norman as they're heading up here to a left-hander. Seth Cole right in the bumper there of William Brock. We might see a move made down here into turn one, especially with Brock taking that corner a little bit wide. Here comes Seth Cole to the inside as they'll head down to the slow right-hander. Six laps completed as we're on to lap seven. So now we got to start speculating about green flag pit stops. Remember I mentioned that it is CTS physics. So these drivers will not be able to make it the full 27 laps without coming to pit road at least once, maybe twice. And as Seth Cole takes the lead, that is again bad news for either James Shelley or Ryan Butcher because that would be a driver in the top 30 in points that would have a victory if he were to close this out. Seth Cole 27th in the points coming into this race. Trying to become the second backmarker motorsports car to go to victory lane. And the third Camry overall to win this season. Saw Jose Mills make a little bit of a error there as he went through the grass. May have wheel hopped on the uh, rumble strip there through the exit of the chicane. That allows William Brock to battle back for the second position. Meanwhile, Benny Watson side by side with Michael Norman for fourth. Opening up quite a gap between himself and the battle for second place now, which is not necessarily a good thing. We saw Michael Norman had a pretty good gap at the start of this race, and it didn't take long for William Brock to run him down and pass him. Pretty good run for a couple of the Michael Norman Motorsports cars here today. Norman started on the pole. He's right now in the fourth position, and his teammate, Matthew Rodriguez, right now in ninth. Matt Rod sixth in the point standing, so there's a lot of drivers that are inside the top 30 in points that are up here towards the front that if they won, they could maybe confirm themselves a spot in the playoffs. Drivers like Seth Cole, Michael Norman, Matthew Rodriguez, and the nine of Ryan Brommer right behind him would also fall into that category. Ryan Brommer is 16th in the points coming into this race. A couple good buddies battling there. That was for the, I believe, sixth position. Benny Watson and Carter Friesen. Watson's going to hold on to the spot at least for now. Friesen falls back possibly into the clutches of Kyle Matthews, who now is in a battle with Matthew Rodriguez. That is for eighth. Question of when these drivers are gonna have to hit pit road is definitely going to be interesting because uh, I think the lap number they want to at least reach is lap 14. If they can reach 14 without coming to pit road, then I think they can make it this race on one pit stop, but if they pit before that, it might be really close on whether they can make it the rest of the way without having to come to pit road again. We'll have to see who can stretch it the furthest and kind of use them as the guinea pig as far as uh, determining 
just how big the fuel tank is and how far you can stretch it on one tank of fuel. Jose Mills, he is hounding Seth Cole for the race lead. Well, Jose Mills got his season started off really well. Second race of the year at Manassas, he went to victory lane. Followed it up with a second win in the second half of the regular season. I'm trying to remember what track that was even at. And for some reason, it's not coming to me. Let me look and see. It was back at uh, Chicago Motor Speedway. That's right. And now trying to become the first three-time winner on the year. And why would he be going for his third win? Well, we talked about this last week, and I think we talked about it the week before as well. All these drivers that have a win, that have two wins, they want to get more victories before the regular season comes to a close because you get five bonus points for every victory in the regular season once the playoff format and the points are reconfigured. Uh, so if Jose Mills were to get his third win in the season here, he would be the number one seed when the playoff points are put together. And he will complete the pass before the bus stop on Seth Cole. Michael Norman, the pole setter, fighting back towards the front. He's up to third. He might have something to say here, as right now we've got Ford, Toyota, Chevy, your top three. Highest dodge, I believe, is Ryan Brommer, but he fell outside of the top ten. There he is right now in the 11th position. The other dodge is teammate Zach Rogers, another two-time winner. Back there, he is, I believe, in 15th as he just got around Julius Anderson this past lap to get that spot. There is our winner from Lakewood, Trey Wright. He uh, tried to get into the top 30 in the point standings, but last week at Martinsville certainly didn't help as he has dropped back to dead last in points. And the gap between him and 30th in the point standings with this and three races remaining is about 90 points. I believe it's 86 points uh, officially. So it, it's still mathematically possible, but it's getting more and more that he'd have to finish out the season with victories in order to make it. Closest battle up front is right now for second place, Seth Cole, Michael Norman. Norman trying to go coast to coast, pole to win here. Of course, a playoff spot could very well be on the line if Norman is able to win here today as well. But with the whole thing about these drivers possibly doing green flag pit stops, would anyone be willing to roll the dice? I think these drivers are all going to have to spend the same amount of time on pit road. They're all going to have to get two cans of fuel. But do you come to pit road a little bit earlier? Get the fresher tires and have a faster outlap? Or do you stay out longer and try and gain track position that way? It's going to be really interesting to see if these drivers have any kind of strategy plays that they might utilize. Battle back here for the ninth position. Carson Gum and Kyle Matthews, and Matthews will take the spot. Good run for Carson Gum. Number of the back marker motorsports cars with good runs here today. Seth Cole up there in second. Carson Gum currently back in 10th, and James Shelley just outside the top 10. He's currently back, I believe, in 13th place as he just lost 12th to Trey Wright. These two have been getting pretty racy with each other. A couple of teammates, William Brock and Austin LaPlante. We'll see if anything comes of that here on this straightaway. Michael Norman still right there within striking distance of Seth Cole as Jose Mills has opened up some daylight between himself and the battle for second. First time today we've really seen a driver be able to open up a gap and be able to maintain it. And it's so difficult to know if these drivers are pitting or not when they run down there on that uh, access area just below the yellow line. Usually that's an indication they're coming to pit row, but you can use that as a racing line as well. And I thought maybe William Brock might be beginning the pit stops, but nope, that's not the case. And this is actually a good sign because they are going to... Uh, make it halfway through lap 13, which is our halfway point. So it looks like these drivers will have only one pit stop that they will have to make here today, and it could very well be the money stop, the stop that decides this race. Jose Mills, though, fought his way up to the front, and so far he's been able to keep everybody at bay, has not really received a challenge since getting around Seth Cole for the race lead. 
Seth Cole, I think, right now more concentrated on what's in his rear view mirror than what's out his windshield. As he's got a rear deck lid full of the bright red Camaro of Michael Norman. William Brock starting to close in on this battle as well, though. And as they will come around and Jose Mills will complete the 14th or the 13th lap of this race and put us on to lap 14. So right there, we are now going to be at the halfway point. So yeah, these drivers are now within their fuel window to be able to make it the rest of the way. So now the question is, when do you pit? Take a look at the lap times last time by Jose Mills, uh, a 111.380, Seth Cole a 111.7. Same for Michael Norman, so about four tenths quicker in clean air is Jose Mills. Let's take a look about that battle for the 16th position in points of who would currently be in it. Uh, James Shelley has dropped back a little bit more. I believe he just got dropped back to the 14th position as Julius Anderson got around him. So he needs Ryan Butcher to be running 26th or worse. Let's see where the 24 is. He's back in 34th. So right now, Ryan Butcher would be the driver in trouble if a different driver were to go to victory lane here today. A couple of other drivers have faded back here since we last looked. James Qualls is now back in the 30th position. Two-time winner Jordan Lopez has faded back to 31st. And Dylan Poteet all the way back to the 36th spot in that uh, number 31. And a number of his teammates are running well here today. So this is not the performance he was looking for. And I believe Michael Norman... Yes, he did. He gave up the third position. He's the first driver to hit pit road. So this is interesting. He came all by himself. Nobody else came down pit road that lap. So Michael Norman laying down the gauntlet. And we're going to have to see if coming to pit road ahead of everybody else, if that's going to give him the advantage, especially give him the advantage here in the early portion after the pit stops are complete because he's going to have the fresher tires. So the gauntlet's been thrown down. Now does everybody else come to pit lane? Or who risks it and stays out a little longer? Jose Mills, he's indicating he's coming to pit road. It's like just about everybody's coming in. Trey Wright in the 28th going to stay out, as will the 71 of James Shelley. It's going to be a very congested pit road this lap, so actually I don't really... Uh, I'm not really against staying out this extra lap if you're Trey Wright or James Shelley because then you'll come down a much cleaner pit road next lap. The question is, though, did you save enough fuel to be able to make it this extra lap? You don't want to risk running out of fuel here because this track has so many elevation changes, and especially if you get to a place where there's an uphill incline, you're not going to be able to coast up that and make it back to pit road, at least not, not with uh, out losing a lot of time on the racetrack. I think someone else stayed out as well. Yeah, a couple of cars did. Ryan Acosta as well as Matt Haas. Diego Yepes also stayed out as did Jesse Turner and Keith Batson. But these drivers were running mid-pack to the rear of the field. So it won't gain them spots up into the top 10. But they're obviously trying to put themselves in a better position than they were when the green flag pit stops began. So we're going to have to basically see about the interval between Jose Mills in the 98, Michael Norman in the three, because those are the drivers up at the front that came to pit road on different laps. Let's drop back, see if we can find them. There is Mills, and there is Norman. Jose Mills got himself quite a ways ahead there. Norman in second, and Seth Cole right now would be back in third unofficially. We'll see who's got the better car though, Michael Norman. We'll check the lap times and see if there's any difference if Norman is able to close up the gap between himself and that Rice Krispies Ford Mustang. He's got about 10 laps still to be able to work with, and he has a bit of a gap between himself and Seth Cole, so he can now kind of concentrate on hitting his marks and running down Jose Mills rather than having to battle for second, which he was having to do before the pit stops began. Trey Wright crossed the line as the race leader, so he will still... Uh, be scored out in front so we'll have to wait till the next lap for the ticker to update itself but let's take a look at the lap times Jose Mills with a 140.936 
That was his uh, get up to speed lap though. Michael Norman though ran a 1.11.0, so that's a very good lap for him. And it looks like visibly he is closing in on Jose Mills. This lap is definitely going to tell the difference because Michael Norman's going to have one lap older tires than Jose Mills. So we'll see what the difference of lap is going to be after Jose Mills has his up to speed lap as opposed to Michael Norman's. Now Norman's up to speed lap was a 111.0. We'll see what Jose Mills up to speed lap was and see if it was faster or slower. Coming to the start finish line. Ticker will now update itself and be correct as Mills crossed the line. 111.0 for him. He was about maybe four one hundreds faster than Michael Norman. But that time by, Michael Norman ran his fastest lap of the race. A 110.469. That was about six tenths faster than Jose Mills. Michael Norman, we know he has a fast car because he qualified on the pole and now he's showing it off here. Is he trying to run down Jose Mills? possibly for this race win. Seth Cole also ran faster than Jose Mills. He ran in the 110s, a 110.5. And these top three have gapped themselves back to fourth place, which right now is Austin LaPlante. Fifth is William Brock. Sixth, Carter Friesen. Seventh is going to be uh, Trey Wright, which I think this might work out very well for him because he'll have the freshest tires of anybody. Eighth is Matthew Rodriguez. James Shelley, ninth, his teammate, Carson Gum is in 10th. 11th, Ryan Brommer. 12th, Julius Anderson. 13th is Benny Watson. 14th, Ryan Acosta. 15th is Zach Rogers. 16th, Kyle Matthews. 17th place is Benjamin Miles. 18th, Matt Haas. 19th, Chris Dollerton. Completing your top 20 is Levi McIntyre. And that last time by, Michael Norman gained another three tenths on Jose Mills. So we're going to have to jump back to the front pretty soon to be able to watch this battle that might be brewing for the race lead. 21st is Diego Yepes, 22nd Mitchell Collins, 23rd is Jessica Shelton, 24th Charles Sanford, 25th Trent Dunham, Wyatt Quayle currently 26th, 27th Jesse Turner, Keith Batson is currently in 28th, Vince Almriego 29th, 30th Jack Mitchell, battle is on here for 31st between Adam Garcia and James Qualls, Johnny Gardner is in 34th, or I'm sorry, 33rd rather, 34th is Jose Mills, 35th, or Jordan Lopez, uh, 35th is Jay Jefferson, 36th is Dylan Young, 37th Ryan Butcher, so this is not good for the 24, 38th is Cole Baker, 39th place is Dylan Poteet, that's not good for him, and right now in 40th is Matt McIntyre. Last car on the lead lap, and I believe everybody is still on the lead lap, yep, everybody is still on the lead lap, and still up to speed, at least to my knowledge. A 110.7 to a 110.5 last time by Norman to Mills. It was 1.15 seconds this time by. Cut it down by 7 tenths. Michael Norman is flying. 3 tenths gain that time and he ran his fastest lap of the race again. A 110.410 to the 110.75 by Jose Mills. Seth Cole. Ran a 110-412. He was right on par with Michael Norman's lap time, about two one thousandths off. So Jose Mills, right now, he is being hunted by Michael Norman. And the bad news for him is there's still quite a ways to go in this race. It may not seem like it. It may seem like over seven laps is not a long time, but when you consider we're at a track like Watkins Glen, it's a lot of time for Norman to be able to do something. And here he comes. He is going to be on the back bumper that 98, I think, by the time they reach the start finish line. Now the question is, is Jose Mills not giving it all he's got? Is he saving, knowing that Michael Norman is using it all up to run him down, then he might have something for Michael Norman in the closing stages. Maybe some strategy playing here, or maybe Michael Norman's just got the better car, you never know. Another four tenths gained that time by. 110.7 for Mills, 110.3 for Norman. Again, besting his best lap with a 110.385. Seth Cole just ran his fastest lap, a 1-10-1. And that could very well be the fastest lap of the race. Nope. Julius Anderson has broken into the 1-9s. 1 minute, 9 second, 9-8-6. Nine, 
Seth Cole's lap only good enough for eighth. As Diego Yepes, Benjamin Miles, Vince Elmriego, Dylan Young, they've all run faster laps in the low 110s. It's like it's gonna be a three dog fight at the front, a Ford, a Chevy, and a Toyota. Then a long ways back to the battle for the fourth position. LaPlante has it, Carter Friesen wants it. You've got Matthew Rodriguez, William Brock, Trey right there as well. That is a blanket from fourth back to eighth. But up front, Jose Mills trying to hang on, trying to get his third win of the season. Michael Norman and Seth Cole, they're trying to get playoff spots and clinch their first win of the season. For Michael Norman coming into this race, fourth in the point stands, I, I, I'm almost absolutely certain that a win would lock himself up a spot in the chase for the championship. No questions asked with only three races remaining on the year. Seth Cole... I would be a little bit more hesitant to say he's got a locked up spot because he's 27th in points coming into this race. No doubt he would gain points if he were able to get the victory, but three weeks is still enough time for a driver that far down the points stands to maybe hit a slump and fall outside the top 30 in points. If Jose Mills wins, then Ryan Butcher would be safe. Right now, Ryan Butcher would be in the 16th uh, slot with James Shelley running currently up in 10th. And that would keep Ryan Butcher in the playoffs, but if Michael Norman or Seth Cole were to go to victory lane here today, that would knock Ryan Butcher possibly out. Well, it would knock, well, put it this way, it would knock him out if Michael Norman won. It wouldn't necessarily knock him out if Seth Cole won. Uh, those two are separated by 11 points coming into this race, though, so... It might actually still knock Ryan Butcher out if Seth Cole were to win. I also noticed that the last car on the lead lap, the last car running, Matt McIntyre, is slowly being reeled in by these race leaders. You've got over four laps to go. I don't know if they might catch him. And remember, the seven is a teammate to the three of Michael Norman. Watch it, that's not even... Oh, that wasn't Matt McIntyre. That's Cole Baker in the 18. And he's a teammate to one of the top three. He's a teammate to the 77 of Seth Cole. And they are closing on him pretty quick. Cole Baker's running about two tenths slower. And these drivers are getting some good straightaway speed, all being in a draft. Now you notice Michael Norman's gotten to the back bumper of Jose Mills, but he hasn't really done anything with him. That's allowed Seth Cole to close up. So we've got a three-car train right now. Is Michael waiting? Is he biding his time, waiting for the right moment, or is he just not able to get a run on Jose Mills right now? Did he use up everything he had in the attempt to run down the 98, and now he doesn't have the grip and the tire, uh, the tires that he needs to be able to make the move? I don't know. He looked really fast there through turn one. Like he kept it really close to the bumper of that 98, so he might still have something. He might be just waiting for the right moment to get the slingshot. Less than four laps to go here at the Glen. Jose Mills, Michael Norman, Seth Cole. They are the ones that are going to settle it out for this victory. The battle from fourth on back, it's good between LaPlante, Friesen, and Rodriguez, but it's not for the victory. So we're going to keep it up here at the front. Right here is one of the spots. If Michael Norman can get through the carousel a little bit better than Jose Mills, he can make a move. But he's just not been able to quite get up to the back bumper, and now he's having to worry about Seth Cole behind him, who might end up taking the pressure off Jose Mills and make it a battle for second. That time by, Michael Norman lost some ground. You can see the gap opened up between himself and Jose Mills. So Michael Norman might be losing a little bit of traction through the corners, and it might be costing him. And here comes Seth Cole now for second. And Seth Cole cannot wait to get around the three car. He's got to make the pass soon. Otherwise, he's going to find himself too far back to be able to catch up to Jose Mills to battle for this victory. Let's see if he can get Michael Norman down here in the, boost, in the bus stop. I said the boost stop. I was going to say the boot and the bus stop all in the same word, and that did not work out so well. Through the grass. On the exit, and he's going to clear Michael Norman. So now, with less than three laps to go, does Seth Cole have what it takes to get up there 
and challenge Jose Mills. Remember, Michael Norman came to pit road a lap sooner than just about everybody else, so that means he would have one lap older tires, which meant probably his tires went away a little bit sooner than everybody else's. Seth Cole and Jose Mills, I believe, both came to pit road on the same lap, so they're on the same uh, strategy as far as how worn their tires are. It's seven tenths of a second difference between Jose Mills and Seth Cole with less than two laps to go. Jose Mills, who came into this race 25th in the points stand, did not have a good run last week at Martinsville. Two-time winner, but down near that 30th in the standings cut line. No better remedy to get away from that cut line position than to go to victory lane for a third time this season. Let's see who makes it through the bus stop better. Looks like they both took about the exact same line. Looks like Seth Cole using a little bit higher of a line through the carousel, trying to get a good run down the straightaway. I don't think they're going to catch Cole Baker. If Seth Cole's going to get this win from Jose Mills, he's going to have to wrestle it away. Michael Norman waiting there to see what happens. This time by, Jose Mills will see the white flag, but Seth Cole is right there within striking distance. Off the corner, Seth Cole looked really good. Good straightaway speed. Can he make a move down here into turn one as the white flag is over the hood of the 98? Not willing to make a move just yet. Hounding the back bumper is Seth Cole. He might make a move right here. He made a move on Michael Norman for second in this turn. Nope, he rides in line still. Trying to get a better, uh, better speed through the S's. He's still right there. Will he make a move going down here? Maybe into the bus stop. He's going to have to try it somewhere. He doesn't want to make the move too late, though. Remember, he was better through the carousel than Jose Mills. Oh, Jose may have slowed up a little bit there. Seth Cole using that outside line. Will he get the run here out of the carousel into this final turn? Will he make the move? He's got to make it now. Otherwise, I don't think he's going to have a shot. Seth Cole within striking distance. Breaks hard into the corner. I don't think he's going to be able to get him. Unless he can get him off the corner. Will he move Jose Mills out of the way? Off the final turn. Seth Cole, will he dart to the inside? Jose Mills trying to block. Jose Mills gonna win the go bowling at the Glen. His third win of the season. I don't know if Seth Cole just couldn't make a move or if Jose Mills was taking away his line, it looked like several times Seth Cole had an opportunity to make a pass, or at least attempt to make a pass, and he never did. And Jose Mills making his car high, wide, and handsome in every corner. I don't know if he took away Seth Cole's momentum or what, but Jose Mills, nonetheless, I, I don't know if we could say it's a confirmed spot. It'll depend on where he is in the point stands with three races remaining, but he will undoubtedly, if he makes the playoffs, take the number one seed with his third win of the season. And he's done it at just about everywhere. He won at the Mile Bank Track of Manassas. He won at the small Chicago Motor Speedway. And now he adds a road course victory to his repertoire. Standings are official. Jose Mills with the victory. It is the sixth win of the season for Blue Oval Automotive. And Seth Cole will end up second. Michael Norman so close again. He'll get third, LaPlante fourth, Friesen fifth, and the rest of your top ten were Matthew Rodriguez, William Brock, Trey Wright, Julius Anderson, and Carson Gum. The Bulldog Motorsports dodges 11th and 12th with Brommer and Rogers, Acosta, Miles, and uh, Matthews and Miles were your top 15. James Shelley faded back to 26th, or to, yeah, 26th. Good job, me. To 16th. But the good news for him and Ryan Butcher is that a former winner went to victory lane and a former winner that was inside the top 30 in the point standings. Ryan Butcher finishes out the day in 36th place. So that is a gap of 20 points between himself and Shelley. So I think Shelley will move into the 15th seed. 
that will move Ryan Butcher down to the 16th seed, and now Ryan Butcher is the driver that has to worry about a different driver going to victory lane uh, for the remainder of the three races of the regular season. Everyone finished on the lead lap. We went caution-free from flag to flag. Green flag pit stop in between, and a good battle there at the end between Mills, Cole, and Norman, but it seemed like nobody could get Jose Mills once he took the lead before we began the cycle of green flag pit stops. That's going to do it here today, though, from the Glen. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to become part of the crew today. We have shown you full feature results, and these are your point standings heading into next week's race, as we will be bringing back, for the first time in quite a hiatus, about a four-week hiatus, we will be back with the 2019 rules package at the Tricky Triangle of Pocono. But until then, I've been Seth Cole, and you've been watching a production of the SRA Offline Racing at its best.